education, housing, and community development. I do realize that the uh, Honorable Minister has answered the first question, so if you can actually elaborate on the second part of this particular question. And the question reads, can the Minister update the Parliament on the first and the second round of $360 unemployment benefit assistance? Thank you, sir. Thank you. I now call on the Attorney General and Minister for Economy, Civil Service, Communications, Housing and Community Development, the Honorable Ayaz Syed Kayu. You have the floor. Um, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Sir, as highlighted earlier on when responding to the question by the Leader of Opposition, um, that uh, we have already, um, through this $90, sorry, this $360 cash assistance, um, approximately $106 million was pumped into the economy within, um, within two weeks. And in fact, the bulk of about $102 to $103 million was pumped into the economy within nine days. Uh, unlike some people who uh, you know, misread it and made fairly obtuse comments outside this parliament, um, a lot of people actually use the money not just for, people don't buy these, uh, don't utilize these funds just to buy food. A lot of people paid their rent, a lot of people bought other uh, goods and services that they would not have been able to afford. And a lot of people actually reached out to us and thanked us and said, look, you know, I'm able to buy um, uh, school shoes for my, my kids when they're ready to go to school. I'm able to buy clothes, pay my rent, uh, pay for phones, etc., and mobile, uh, you know, electricity. Mr. Speaker, sir, this is in conjunction with already there's about $50 million worth of loans has already been approved under the $200 million scheme that was announced in the budget also. So any micro, small, medium enterprise can go out and borrow from the commercial banks with the interest rate of no more than 3.99%, and they don't have any interest payments, no principal payments for the first two years. They have to go through the approval process. Already $50 million has been disbursed, and there's another $50 million that's uh, currently being assessed by the, uh, the, those financial institutions. Uh, from my understanding of it, so far the banks that have participated under this scheme has been HFC, uh, FDB, uh, BSP, and Bread Bank. And they have participated in the scheme, um, not West Bank and ANZ. Uh, Mr. Speaker, so just very, very quickly, uh, the 360 first round scheme has come to an end. Uh, we had various helpline numbers. There's a number of lessons to be learned before I go into the second round, Mr. Speaker, so talking about the second round. We found that there were some social welfare recipients who actually uh, received it. There were some um, uh, problems with the record that the Ministry of uh, Social Welfare had, um, uh, Ministry of Poverty Alleviation. So we are working with the Ministry to make sure that those cracks are actually sealed up. Uh, there was some confusion around people who are working on reduced hours. We had said that it was only applicable for those people who actually are not in employment. Um, there were some people, of course, who received it even though they were in employment, very few of them, because the employers actually had not paid the FNPF, so it did not show for the previous three months. But FNPF is now working along those lines, so those, that again will be uh, addressed. Uh, some people had, we had helped them, uh, literally thousands of people to get their right tin, uh, help them with the BRN, uh, that's been ironed out, so what we're saying going into the future, uh, there won't be any assistance, they need to get that uh, right. Again, applications need to be made on your own SIM card, not other people's SIM cards. Uh, that is critically important. <clears throat> the um, 360 is only applicable on, uh, um, on, on, on prepay phones, not postpay, uh, because obviously if you can afford a postpay, uh, then obviously you can have an account. Uh, so the idea is that it's only applicable for prepay, which is what M-Pesa and MyCash is, is on. Uh, we found also some businesses actually that had applied, some people who ran shops, etc., uh, who had applied too. And we've identified those people, and again, the onus is on them not to do so. Um, Mr. Speaker, sir, the second round of the 360 uh, will open next month. It will open from the 11th to the 15th of October. So there are uh, five days. People are around three weeks from now till then to gather all the information are required to submit. We urge them to make sure you get the right numbers, your right BRN, your right TIN, your voter card, whichever information is required. Please fill it out correctly. We are not going to help you to fix it up. You need to get it right. You've already done the first round. This is the second round. The application period, like I said, will be for five days. This gives people the ample opportunity to, um, uh, to apply over a period of time. 
the requirement, of course, is that you need to have your second dose. The 360, you need to have your first dose. For this round, you must have your second dose. If, however, for example, your second dose is due at the end of October, and the application period is from the 11th to the 15th, you can still apply and just prove to us by 31st October that you have received your second dose. We had a lot of people do that in the first round. We allowed for that. So, you know, because there are some people who can't get it, for example, before the 15th of October. So they've got time till the 31st of October, but make sure you apply within the period of 11th to the 15th of, of October. Uh, Mr. Speaker, sir, uh, we, we'd like to start disbursing the funds. Obviously, uh, Christmas is coming around, Diwali sooner than Christmas too, and uh, a lot of people have requested for that. A lot of people, you know, for example, uh, pre-buy things for Christmas. They can plan around that. And of course, people buy, you know, goods for, uh, for, uh, for Diwali too. So, Mr. Speaker, sir, we hope to then, therefore, once the application is closed, we go through a very rigorous um, vetting process and we hope to start the payments itself uh, from the 2nd of November. So the application, like I said, is from the 11th to the 15th of October. Please fill it out, send in your applications. If you receive a second dose after the 15th, send us the details, but make sure you apply between 11th and 15th. And just because you've applied doesn't mean you get your money the next day or next hour. A lot of people have this. They, say, they think that as soon as they apply, they'll get it. But we are saying you'll start getting the money from the 2nd of November. And of course, we can uh, disburse it sooner as long as we, we, we get all the right information. And, uh, but we, we're looking at disbursing from the 2nd of, of, uh, of November. Uh, Mr. Speaker, sir, again, like I highlighted, that these are some of the matters that people who apply need to consider. Uh, we urge those people who are uh, looking at uh, scheming the system, please don't do that because you're denying other people who do deserve it uh, to get that assistance. We are also saying that if we have the capacity, there may be still some people later on who may not be able to get, uh, who may not be able to get jobs. We want to be able to help them even after the period of November. So if we have more genuine applicants, we have more capacity to be able to help those uh, after the November period. We could even look at January or February, uh, depending on how the, the economy opens up and more jobs get created. Uh, this is actually, Mr. Speaker, sir, one point, last point I'd like to make. A lot of people who got the 360, a lot of them, in fact, have bought uh, like uh, raw, raw materials for whatever business they were getting. Somebody bought, went and bought a lot of pineapples. They're selling pineapple by the roadside. It helped them to just give that seed funding for the small business. So with the uh, economy now opening up, Mr. Speaker, sir, borders opening up, and God willing, with the... Um, us achieving the 80% uh, very soon, that when we have international travel opening, a lot of people who will open up their stores by the roadside or go and sell goods, you know, outside the hotels to the workers or to outside Fiji Airways or garment factories, whatever it is, they'll have that seed funding to start earning more money. And that's what a lot of people have put this 360 uh, to use for. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir. Uh, thank you, Honorable. Honorable you can have cooler, you have the floor. What will the government do to those who abuse this fund on alcohol and uh, unnecessary spending? Honorable Minister. Um, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Sir, uh, I'm glad the Honorable Member raised this question because some people have made some public comments about that. Um, we have to uh, be able to ensure that people have a particular level of responsibility. The money is being given in good faith to these people who are unemployed. We check with FNPF. If they have not, uh, not been receiving any monies, we therefore know that they have not employed in the formal sector. There are people in the informal sector who have applied, and I think this is the first time it's happened with the $50 also. Because there is the last survey done by Reserve Bank of Fiji a number of years ago uh, said that there was about 135,000 people who were gainfully employed in the informal sector. So, for example, if you go to Nandi before COVID-19, just outside McDonald's, that stretch that goes from McDonald's up to, to the Martin Tar area where all the, you know, the Japanese restaurant is, you'll find a lot of people selling coconuts. Now, some of these people used to make, on a daily basis, about $100. Some of them, you know, some days they may make $50. But in a week, some would make $200. Now, suddenly that income has gone away. So these people needed to be assisted too because they were from the informal sector. They don't have any FNPF contributions. So we've made these payments in good faith. 
And Mr. Speaker, so therefore, you know, we cannot go and tell them how to spend the money. We urge them how to spend the money. And the bulk of the people who have received the funds have actually utilized it properly. The example that I've gave, Mr. Speaker, sir, if I, for example, have received the 360 and I spend uh, part of that money in buying groceries, I spend part of that money paying, say, uh, some rent, I spend part of the money buying a pair of shoes for my child, and if I go in and buy six bottles of long neck or six bottles of beer, what is wrong with that? I have not spent my entire money on alcohol. So people have come along and said, oh, you know, that guy was buying alcohol. Yeah, okay, well, what percentage of 360 did he buy alcohol? Alcohol is actually quite cheap at the moment. So people may buy six bottles of beer, or they might, you know, buy a gin and tonic, those cans, or whatever it is. So we, we don't think there's anything specifically wrong with it. Of course, we'll get them to, we like them to spend the entire sum of money on non-alcoholic things, or non-cigarette things, but if people have given it priority to buy one or few bottles, then that's okay. As long as they put the bulk of the money to good use. And that's what it's all about, Mr. Speaker. So what is, this has done is also given a lot of people confidence in terms of giving access to spending, but also a lot of the smaller businesses have in fact benefited from it too. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Honorable Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Honourable Speaker. Firstly, thank you for having that question asked about the horses. And I hope that the Minister already ensures that, uh, personally ensures that male and female horses make it to Kandavu. Honourable Speaker, my supplementary question uh, about this is that also one of the complaints that came from recipients was that uh, agents, agents were overcharging in terms of their fees uh, when uh, recipients received uh, their money, either MPISA or MyCash that the agents were charging uh, them uh, more than what the $3 that was sent with the 360. So they've had to pay more fees. Some were charging even up to $10 at some outlets. Some were uh, asking people to withdraw twice so they couldn't give the full amount. So they could only withdraw twice or three times so they were paying fees every single time. So what is the lesson there for um, you know, uh, rolling out the second law to ensure that they do receive that 360 and not way less than what they're supposed to receive. Thank you. Honourable Minister, you have the floor. Sir, um, the, all recipients actually receive the full amount of 360, but we actually from government pay 363. The $3 is the fee that we pay to uh, uh, Vodafone and also Digicel uh, for the use of those facilities. Uh, this is why we have repeatedly sent to the people who actually receive these funds Please go and use those funds using the QR codes. I can go now to extra supermarket. I have my M Pesa money in my phone, and I can go and buy $100 worth of groceries. All I have to do is simply tap my phone, my M Pesa, and it'll deduct $100. You don't actually need to take out cash. Unfortunately, a lot of people want the cash in their hand. You know, they're not used to the idea of paying things by QR. And some of the people, of course, we do not necessarily blame them. They don't have shops near where they live that has got a QR code. This is why, if you see in the budget, we've actually made an allocation where we are now, for the next two years, any shop that wants to get onto M-Pesa will... I don't have to give them money. So we've said for the next two years we'll pay for that to get more people onto it. Similarly, like we said, we've made allocation for VT card. So that's one way of dealing with it. They were, and uh, Honorable Tambui, I don't know if you recall or not, but Vodafone actually issued a press statement that there were some shopkeepers who were taking advantage of people who were very impatient, who wanted the cash in their hand, they did not want to go and queue outside the licensed agents of Vodafone and uh, Digicel. So they went to other shops who said, okay, you don't want to stand in the queue, you want the cash, give me 10 bucks. In fact, we found one person in bar, of all places, charging 20 bucks. So that is the choice of the recipient. They are being very silly. 
They can get the full 360 if they had patience and wanted the cash and lined up. If you want to go and do something dodgy, you want to go to a dodgy dealer, that's what they do. So that has got nothing to do with government. It's got nothing to do with Vodafone Digicel. But they were these people who did not want to use the QR system. They are these people who wanted cash immediately. And so they went and, you know, in fact, we heard one person who paid $50 because he just wanted the money then. So, unfortunately, they wasted that $50 and that's their choice. Thank you. Honorable members, uh, that brings an end to the oral questions for today. Uh, just a reminder to the Honorable Minister Reddy regarding your horses for Kadavu, that uh, make sure that they get to like each other here before you take them over there. <laughs> Yes, yes, here, here. Because, <laughs> no, they can play hard to get a new. You don't get the result. We will now move on to oral questions. To the first oral question for today, and I give the floor to the Honorable Piotr Kondorandua to ask oral question 208. Yeah, thank you. Uh... Honorable uh,